Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Glad you could make it today. Let's check out our cosmic weather, see what we're dealing with energetically. First and foremost, solar wind tells us or shows us a speed of 347.1 kilometers per second. Planetary K index at the moment is a 1, could get as high as a 2 in the next 24 hours. Corona holes are about the same as they were yesterday. But, you know, they're just moved around a little bit, but seems to be about the same and we're shows right here that today tomorrow is the time we should be expecting this solar wind to hit us from the corona holes up there our chance of flares has gone up a little bit on the 24 hour it was down to 25 now it's up to 35 so there seems to be an uptick in that however the geomagnetic storm activity is down with really not much of a possibility at all unless you're in the higher latitudes now, something that we are keeping an eye on is this super big sunspot right here. But not only is that a super big sunspot, but look at this. It's got a friend. And both of these appear to be turning slowly towards the Earth. And believe it or not, this sunspot right here, bigger than Jupiter. Pretty amazing how big the sun is that this itself could be bigger than the planet Jupiter, and yet this is only a small speck on the sun. Okay, something that we're going to keep an eye on. Our astrology for today, right here. Sun sign the same, Capricorn, so we're dealing with the element of Earth. Unconscious, the element we're going to work with, is fire. So we got fire underneath earth on the top. So think about how fire and earth works in life when you work with those elements. How fire operates with earth. Well we know that fire can burn. It can burn the earth or it can be used in other ways for example in a kiln to be able to harden the clay to make plates and bowls and things of this nature so we know that fire can be useful fire can be used in many different ways that is very useful or it can also be very destructive depending on how it is used if it is controlled not controlled in the case of the fire we're dealing with its creative ideas as well as truthfulness higher intentions higher consciousness Sagittarius is about something a little bit more than just the normal level it's kind of reaching up to the next level of understanding wanting to gain that understanding All right it's also uh, Jupiter planet Jupiter is planet there so that's what we're dealing with element wise when we go to the moon phase we're just about at that new moon only seven percent to go and on the Mayan Oracle five tone day five tones are called the overtone today's the world bridger the guide for today is the wizard so we've got the overtone world bridger guided by the wizard challenge for today is our ability to question like-minded energy is our ability to explore and our hidden power is our vision our vision the phrase for today is I empower in order to equalize commanding opportunity I seal the store of death with the overtone tone of radiance I'm guided by the power of timelessness and again we are in the wave spell 13 day period of time with the theme being spirit communication inspiration so this is where we're dealing with and we're at the fifth position along the way on the Gregorian calendar it's the 9th of January 2013 so we're moving right along so yesterday on the show the first thing I played the first uh, video was from the Roswell interview I played chapter one 10 minutes of it Pretty interesting, don't you think? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play Chapter 2. All right, this video itself is a little bit shorter. Um, it's only five minutes. I'm going to play the whole thing, and then we're going to continue on. All right, let's check this out. Chapter 2. Here we go. Chapter 2, my second interview. In the next interview, I was told to ask the alien only one question. Official transcript of interview. Top secret. 
Official Transcript of the U.S. Army Air Force, Roswell Army Airfield, 509th Bomb Group, Subject, Alien Interview, July 10, 1947. Question. Why have you stopped communicating? Answer. No stop. Others. Hidden. Covered. Secret fear. The alien cannot communicate with them because they were afraid of her or did not trust her. And it is clear to me that the alien is not aware that some people have secret intentions toward her and are hiding their real thoughts. It is equally obvious to me that the alien does not have even a tiny bit of fear of us, or anything else for that matter. Matilda O'Donnell McElroy, Personal Note I pondered the words I chose to convey the meaning of the alien's thoughts very carefully before reporting to the stenographer and the people who were waiting anxiously in the other room. Personally, I never suffered any fear or misapprehension about the alien whatsoever. I was very, very curious and excited to learn anything and everything I could about her and from her. However, like the aliens, I did not have much trust or confidence in the agents or authorities who were controlling my interviews. I had no idea what their intentions toward her might be. However, I am sure that the military officers were very, very nervous about having an alien spacecraft and pilot on their hands. At that moment, my greatest worry was how to more clearly understand the thoughts and ideas of the alien. I think that I was doing pretty well as a telepathic receiver, but not as good as a telepathic sender. I wanted desperately to figure out a better way to communicate with the alien, in a way that would enable the growing legion of government officials to understand her more directly, without having to rely on my interpretation of her thoughts. I did not feel very well qualified to act as an interpreter, yet I was the only person with whom the alien would communicate so it was up to me to get the job done. I was also becoming acutely aware that this was probably the biggest news event in the history of the Earth, and that I should be proud to have had any part in it. Of course, by that time the entire incident had been officially denied in the press, and a cover-up of immense proportions by the military and the powers that be had already begun. However, I was beginning to feel the pressure of the responsibility for being the first person on Earth, as far as I knew, to communicate with an extraterrestrial life form. I think I know how Columbus must have felt when he discovered a new world the size of a continent on one small planet, but I was able to discover an entirely new unexplored universe. While I waited for my next instructions from my superiors, I went to my quarters under escort of several heavily armed MPs. Several other men dressed in black suits and ties accompanied me also. They were still there when I got up in the morning. After breakfast, which was brought to me in my own quarters, they escorted me back to the office at the base that was used for the interview. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Derek, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the UFO News for today. I have five stories for us. Let's get to them. Story number one comes to us from a triangle above the United States. It says this two amazing UFO clips were seen and recorded in the sky above the United States on Sunday the 6th. All right. Now, pretty good movement there from whatever this object is. Obviously, some sort of triangular craft. Okay. Pretty fascinating. It's good movement on this one. Uh, question is, is this real? Always the good question that we need to ask ourselves. But whatever it is, it definitely is triangular. Okay. Now we're going to move from this here. We're going to move over to the next one here. This is a flying saucer over Columbia. This was on the 8th. 
just the other day. This interesting daytime footage of some kind of dish-shaped crab hovering the sky of Columbia. Okay, here's a little close-up view of the object, and obviously you see it bouncing around the middle of the screen. The way it's bouncing around at times, it almost looks like there's two of them. But I'm sure it's just the speed of the object itself. Okay, moving from there, we're going to go to Hawaii. It says two discs reported shooting in succession out of Honolulu. A couple driving along H1 Freeway reported that two small circular disc or spherical gunmetal gray or black objects shooting in succession out of the downtown Honolulu, Hawaii began about 8.15 a.m. on January 8, 2013, according to testimony from MUFON. The couple and the three-year-old son were westbound near the university exit when they noticed the first object. The object was flying quickly out of the downtown Honolulu area at about 45 degrees and then turned south and changed its angle, angle of ascent to a more straightened path, reporters witnessed. When I first noticed it, it was above the skyline heading south towards Diamond Head over the ocean. The witness couldn't identify the object as it moved quickly out of sight. She goes on to say that she and her husband are trying to figure out what it was, since it did not fit anything that they had seen before and did not have any wings. They were also wondering if they were just seeing clearly. Okay, here's general location of where it was. And moving from here, Manchester is claimed now to be a hot spot. They keep having a number of sightings and things going on out there says uh, Greater Manchester is a hot spot for UFOs, a leading paranormal expert claims. In Greater Manchester, police have confirmed that there have been a number of, UF of reports of unexplained sightings of UFOs. In 2012, areas in Woodley, Atherton, Holm, Droylson were all reported to have UFOs lighting up the sky. A Freedom of Information Act made the man Kunian Matters revealed. Descriptions, including full ring of lights, huge bright yellow, green, and red lights with a huge beam and golden growing, glowing lights were reported to the police in 2012 and later listed as unexplained. Stephen Murra, 45, chairman of Manchester's Association of Paranormal Investigators and Training, said the UFOs have a tendency to gravitate ter towards certain facilities, such as military and chemical sites and airports. Manchester has a high level of UFO sightings over the years. Mr. Mera, who has been fascinated by paranormal activity for 30 years, said his organization had 57 direct reports of UFO sightings in 2012, with many more discussed online. There have already been two reports this year. Much more to the article, but definitely they're uh, getting a lot more things going on there. And this one right here, uh, this is an article we haven't talked about him in a while but Bob Lazar remember Bob Lazar worked at area 51 or so he claims Bob Lazar is a physicist who worked at the secret military installation X4 near area 51 in Nevada in this excerpt from his famous interview in 1991 Lazar discusses the science behind the UFOs that we have seen often in our skies it's a long piece 17 minutes I'm just gonna play a couple minutes of this for you Check it out. It produces a gravity wave, which is similar to the gravity wave that the Earth produces. However, the craft phase shifts the wave. In other words, it, it turns the wave, not really in an opposite polarity, but something to that effect, where it will work against the natural gravity wave of the Earth, and it produces lift in, in that effect. Is there any internal protection for the crew? Does the craft generate a, uh, a gravitational field inside the craft itself? Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Being inside that field essentially doesn't shield you, but essentially you're in, and this is a, a terrible way to say it, almost in a different realm because you're you're now influenced only that by that gravitational field. For instance, people wonder how a craft like this can make a turn 
at such high speed, a 90 degree turn, when they would imagine people slamming up against the wall or something to that effect. Well, that, that really wouldn't happen. Inertia would have no effect. Uh, you're, you're in a distortion. And don't forget that gravity distorts time and space. So really nothing is going to influence you while you're in there. Describe the gravity amplifiers for us and some of their different operating configurations. There are three amplifiers. The craft can operate on a single one, can lift off the ground. The way in which it's propelled are two different ways. There's what they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator, uh, or a Delta configuration, where it's use utilizing all three. Delta configuration would be for space travel. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side, as opposed to a science fiction movie where you see a flying saucer moving around. The craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. All right, so I'm going to leave that for you to check out the rest of it, 17 minutes in length. That's our UFO news for today. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. 2012, the Bach tune will end. All right, continuing on. Next up, what we have here is four minute news, suspicious observers. Let's check this out. Good morning. 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 Good this can keep you busy all day. BBC article revising down the warming predictions on the climate, saying it's not warming as much as they'd thought. But they are cautious to remark that this doesn't change the bigger picture, and I agree, the warming is real. But even if you take their highest estimates, the CO2 line has already deviated from that temperature and is essentially on a vertical line now. Next, you'd think I'd love this, NASA pushing for the solar climate connection, just like me except they are saying that the minuscule increases in solar output are a major driver. I was happy to see their layered mechanics diagram, which is close to what I've shown before, the known, understood, and accepted mechanism for the climate effect of the sun. In addition to climate, yesterday I described how space weather could induce ground currents, the things they are now using to predict quakes, but there's another mechanism by which the solar effect moves large amounts of air or changes drastically the pressure on the land or the sea level many quake triggers. Back to NASA's article, you can find them discuss the magnetosphere but not until the very last paragraph and in no way relating to my causation hypothesis which can be found in the link right below this video. Carlsberg Ridge in the Indian Ocean having a major quake swarm. Something is shifting. Slightly north of that we had a 5.9 in India. Folks, I will be scaling back weather coverage to major events in addition to being able to check this stuff for yourself. You don't really need their forecasts. Air rushing to a point in Texas? Hmm. Air rushing north and away from the middle of the United States. Air always flying into the blue lows and away from the red highs. That Texas low dips way south, so the moist air rushing north from the Gulf of Mexico is warm, hitting cold, drier air, and that's a recipe for precipitation, and here's the watch zone for this evening. Cyclone Norell is strengthening and is going to give Western Australia a visit in a few days. Recorded this last night, Rio meter cut out at 1200 UTC. Interesting that the induction magnetometer is missing data at that same time period as well. To the right of that is some baseline resonance. Now at the original time in question as we look at the solar wind, 1200, the density rises in the orange and the shallowing out of temperature in green suggests the leading edge or contrasting wave of solar wind. Not enough for a malfunction, they may have hit a geoelectric event. On the right, that slight little rise caused the baseline resonance on the induction magnetometer and was likely the CME impact. If you can quickly note the one orange blip on the left side between 7 and 8 UTC, it was a proton and electron event here on Earth as well. Coming to today's solar wind, we see that the CME impact was very, very weak and not very long-lived. Still didn't get the coronal hole stream though. 
Sunspots are dying fast. Take 50 off yesterday's sunspot number as they all fall down. Save one on the eastern limb. Two massive umbra, two oppositely polarized umbra, and a shocking amount of calm so far. If you gotta watch something else, there is a third sister born between the two cresting together last week. Look closely on the right. Do you see this filament expanding and releasing? I saw much dive back into the sun during the solar tsunami produced in the wake of the instability, but I would have expected a CME. Satellites show nothing, but some are missing data. And the SOHO flipped around, which is why that arm is now on the bottom left. Major Earth-facing coronal hole. We've had space weather anomalies and a hell of an uptick on the Carlsberg Ridge. That's a small earthquake watch. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Alright, very good. Something to pay attention to with what's going on out there in the world today. Alright, so... What to talk about, what to talk about, what to talk about. You know, I uh, you know, always spend a lot of time really considering what it is I want to talk about on the show. I don't, I don't want to be considered a fear monger by bringing up issues that are kind of conspiracy-based issues. I'd like to focus more on the positive. But it's also very important that we don't have our head in the sand. I'm not very good at sticking my head in the sand and just ignoring the things that are going on. I feel it's very important that we pay attention and we know. So that being the case, I there are stories that I pick that I feel are very important that we pay attention to, not from a standpoint of getting caught up in any fear about the situation, but to be informed. Because when we're informed of situations, it can help us to move past that situation to a solution. So, we are told to pay attention, and we have been told for a long time to pay attention to information that comes to us from different sources. One of these sources is the Bible. Now, there's certainly a lot of discussion about what the Bible actually is. It, was it written by man? Is it the Word of God? Is it a combination of the two? Has it been edited? On and on and on. Lots of different questions. So, the important thing is, many, many believe what the Bible says, and many who have studied the Bible have seen that the words of the Bible have come to be true. They've proven themselves over and over and over again, and will probably continue to do so. Well, one of the things we hear about is this mark of the beast. It talks about in the book of Revelation. Well, there's been a lot of talk about what is this mark of the beast. Now, as we're in the year 2013, we are aware that we have this RFID chip. It's been talked about for some time in a variety of circumstances. It's been being used um, in a variety of different ways, some of which are actually implanting in human beings. Now, that here is one of the things of concern. But we've come to a weird point in time now where governments are now trampling on the very spiritual and religious rights that people have and this mark of the beast is one of these situations we're told to avoid the mark of the beast right That's what the Bible tells us now right here goes on to say remember there's this story of this girl she a school child she was going to get this badge and has to wear this badge that has this chip in it Parents said no. It's against their religious beliefs. But listen to what the decision was. A federal judge in Texas has issued a ruling that a student's religious objections to wearing a badge from a school ID program that utilizes radio chips to identify students and faculty and monitor their movements are secular and therefore not a concern to the school or the court. Plaintiff's objection to wearing the Smart ID badge without a chip is clearly a secular choice rather than a re religious choice wrote U.S. Di District Judge Orlando Garcia in a case brought about by the Rutherford Institute on behalf of the student Andrea Hernandez, who has been attending John Jay High School in the Northside Independent School District in San Antonio. Court record shows that the Hernandez family felt that the chip in the badge was the mark of the beast and had a religious objection to the tracking of his daughter. And then it goes on later to describe... There is the uh, 
you know, just describes more of the situation. So this is one of those situations now, just like the the situation and the birth control and the Catholics. This is one of those things where they're trampling on a person's religious rights and beliefs. So now this girl and her family, what they said is non-existent. Doesn't matter. So what does that say for our society when we are taking the very word of God as we know it to be, the very instruction manual that we've been told for so long in this planet to use, when we're throwing that out and disregarding the very words? Is that a fulfillment in the, of the prophecies itself? Because the, the book of Revelation talks about those who will be laughing. And we're in a time where people are laughing at the very things that the book of Revelation said they will be laughing about. We're in a time of all the doubters and, and all the hypocrites and, and all of the evildoers in the world and the Antichrist activity that is taking place. So much stuff. This is just par for the course. And we need to stand up against this. We need to be aware that this goes on. Now, how are you going to fight this? How do we do anything about this? The reason that I bring this up is because this is not a physical battle. We can't go in and we can't physically fight with the people who are making these rules and laws. We understand that they are just making foolish decisions and we need to overcome those foolish decisions in other ways. Well, spirit always travels from spirit down into the physical. So we need to go to the spiritual. We need to understand this is part of the spiritual battle that's going on. God is being removed from everything by an antichrist in government, not just in the United States, but around the world. Okay? If you need me to prove that to you, then you really haven't been paying attention. However, I'm pretty certain that you have seen, as I have, the same situation taking place. So we need to be very aware that there's a spiritual battle going on. And if we can tap in to ways to alleviate the problem through the spiritual, we'll get to that place we need to be. But we need to be strong because there's a lot of non-believers and a lot of those, unfortunately, that said that they would never be like the hypocrites and the doubters. They've become exactly the things that said they'd never become. So we live in a world where we need to uh, really help ourselves out of this because there's a lot of people who've been trapped, tricked, fooled, and will continue to be fooled because they think that there's no such thing as a dark energy out there that can affect them. The greatest trick the devil played was convincing people he did not exist. And in all of these situations, we have decisions being made that are not based on spirit, but are based on satanic, antichrist-like attitudes and beliefs, and it's not what God had intended. You got God, and you got all these beliefs, and they're opposite. There's a problem there. We need to fix that problem. Now, if we don't fix that problem, what's going to happen? This is, uh, this is Charlie. We haven't heard him from him in a while, Charlie McGrath. And this is a video here. It's called The Civil War Coming to America. If we don't really get ourselves together real quick... This is what they're pushing. This is what the Antichrist-like governments of the world are pushing. This is what the Antichrist-like government of the United States is pushing. Now, is everyone in the government bad? No. Are there rogue elements? Absolutely. Do the rogue elements need to go? Absolutely. How is it going to happen? We, the people of this country, need to bond together and stop fighting with each other. Divide and conquer is the way that in which... People are kept from getting the freedoms they want. This is a divide and conquer method. Listen to what Charlie has to say. It's My name is Charlie McGrath. I'm the founder of WideAwakeNews.com and a host on the Rinse Radio Network. Should we be surprised that gun control, that gun grab uh, is, uh, is on its way? The answer is no, we shouldn't. Um, you know, we've had years now of banker takeover, rewriting our constitution, rewriting what free market uh, capitalism is all about, transferring fraudulent failure onto the backs of the people of the world, dominating our government with financial uh, special interest and financial influence, all to benefit them and take the financial future from the people of this country and the world 
and giving it to, to themselves, upwardly integrating it into fewer and fewer hands. In this same amount of time, you've had our, our government, if we want to call it that, it's truly their government because they work on their, the elite's behalf, coming out and introducing legislation that is uh, in the name of protecting you from terror-loving terrorists, but in, in uh, reality, all it does is manage to take more and more of your freedom, destroy the Constitution a little bit more. You, you know, everything we've done, everything we've done since uh, George W. Bush said we're going to suspend free market capitalism in order to save it, is an agenda that's unfolding. And at the fruition of this plan, you have a populace that is still armed and dangerous. You can't pass all this legislation. You can't uh, keep telling people things are getting better. You can hide 50 million people uh, from the mainstream media uh, who are in the breadlines, the modern-day breadlines, far uh, greater than you could in 1929, 1930, when the people were obviously in depression, when the economy obviously was not turning the corner uh, for a better time. Now we have this mainstream media and government with Federal Reserve controlling it that can print money at nauseum and uh, hide all the pain and suffering going on in this country. They can tell you it's 7% unemployment, and most people will believe it. Now, it, it's a fact that we're experiencing participation rates that are at uh, you know multi, multi-decade multi lows, but it doesn't matter because as long as people keep turning into the mainstream media and getting their information there, they are uh, led to believe that we are in some sort of recovery. This agenda is playing out, and it's coming to an end. So it makes sense that with the start of it to the finish of it, that there at some point must be the introduction of legislation to take arms away from the people of this country, because that is still a very dangerous uh, populace out there when they can defend themselves from tyrannical government. And this is the agenda going forward now. So when everybody by now had a chance to see Alex Jones go on with Pierce Morgan yesterday, everybody had a chance to see how this this played out. I happen to agree with everything that he argued uh, to uh, Pierce Morgan about. The problem is, what on earth was he thinking about going on to their platform, to their program, and, and thinking that he was going to be uh, given a fair shake at presenting the case of freedom in the Second Amendment? If this wasn't a tactical move by the power elite in order to put him on there and try to make him look uh, like a buffoon, uh, then, you know, it, it certainly played out to be exactly that. A, a political article today quotes Pierce Morgan as saying he's now the poster boy for gun control. Alex Jones was right. But how he did it and, you know, him going on there, in my opinion, was an absolutely mistake on his part and a mistake for uh, Second Amendment and freedom lovers across this country. They must, try, they must make anybody who wants to carry a gun in order to protect themselves from tyranny, they have to make these people out as lunatics. So it doesn't matter who goes on there. They're going to do their best to uh, destroy their credibility and, uh, and make their argument look like that of a person who should not have a gun. And that's exactly what they uh, managed to do in that interview. This agenda will play out. We will see legislation that uh, comes in and uh, tries to threaten your ability uh, to defend yourself from tyrannical government. And I happen to believe that this one issue, this gun grab by uh, the power elite and their representatives in Washington, D.C., can uh, most definitely be the catalyst for civil war in this country. Because there's an awful lot of people here that pay no attention to what's going on with a banking elite. They can sit there and they can watch uh, the Super Bowl or a playoff game or, or a college championship game and see the banks, the two big to fail institutions that have gutted our economy, being advertised all over the place in the stadium and then have to endure their commercials uh, during uh, a commercial break. And they just don't care because they're not interested. They're not interested in uh, their financial future the way they should be. They're not interested in the destruction of the Constitution as they should be. But there's a whole bunch of people in this country that understand the right to bear arms. And I truly believe that it is going to be the ultimate dividing wedge shoved right down the middle of this nation. And the majority of the people still understand that the, uh, the Second Amendment was put in place not so people could go duck hunting, not so people could go deer hunting or shoot sporting clays, but to defend themselves from tyrannical government that is completely and totally and utterly out of control. Stories are attached. That's all I got. Okay, so 
for the reasons that he just spoke of, this is why it's important to pay attention to really what's going on out there. Okay? Because if we don't, if we just become apathetic, then we're just like everybody else right now. The problem is too many people have been apathetic for far too long, and that's why we're in the situations that we're in. Okay? A government has gone rogue. Instead of people completely coming together to understand it, you've got groups of people supporting that rogue government. Why? If that was your own family member behaving the way that government, would you tolerate it for one bit? Probably not. Probably none of the people that support Obama there would tolerate that behavior from any of their kids or family members. Yet they tolerate it from a guy in office for some silly reason because they've been spoon-fed over and over and over misinformation from the news media that they think is telling them the truth. Thank goodness 60% of the people that used to watch the mainstream understand that they're not getting anything of value. So that only leaves 40% left who still have their head in the sand and are in denial. And I think it's just a state of denial and acceptance because they really don't want to know what's going on. Because if they had to think about it, it might interrupt their lives. But if people don't take time to think about these things and be aware of what's really going on in the world, things can get a whole lot worse. A whole lot worse. Just think of how many people are blindly taking their kids to get vaccinations. Lots of them. Not even knowing what's in the vaccines. And yet they'll go and the warnings are out there and then people die. And what can you say when that happens is the information was there. You've been warned over and over again. There's only so much you can do, right? You can, only, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, you can show someone the door. You can't drag them through. We need to pay attention more and more. There's signs going on, okay? We had false flag events have taken place in this country many, many times. Many times. Operation Northwoods was one of them that was declassified. You had the Gulf of Tonkin. You had the 9-11 event. You had the event that took place with the underwear bomber. One thing that is a telling sign if, if something is a false flag is to see what sort of legislation is put out immediately after the event happened. 9-11, what was right after that? Patriot Act. Underwear bomber, what was right after that? We need more body scanners. Shooting that took place in Aurora, we need to have gun control. Shooting took place up in, in Wisconsin, we need gun control. Shooting took place at Sandy Hook, we need gun control. All these things are already in place. Something very weird about this whole Sandy Hook shooting. And I don't know why, and I can't describe and explain this, and I don't know if you can either, but there's been there's been research done searching on news stories about Sandy Hook, and for some reason in the Google searches, there's stories about the Sandy Hook massacre that go back to February 2012. But according to the timeline that I'm aware of, this event did not take place until December 2012. So how is there stories that have been going on for the whole year, and why are they listed in Google that way? You can search it for yourself. It's, it's mind-boggling. Okay? So either someone out there is playing a trick on people, but the way computer code works, as far as I'm aware, is you put the information in and it spits back the information that you ask it to spit back. There's algorithms, there's codes. You tell it what to do. So if the computer is gathering information in a certain way and categorizing in a certain way, more than likely somebody programmed it to do that. So why did somebody program it that way? And who instructed them to program it that way? You know, how deep does that rabbit hole go? This Sandy Hook shooting here is a staged event. This is a professor, a Florida professor, College, a Florida college professor is stirring controversy with his claim, with his claims that last month's Newtown, Connecticut school shooting did not happen as reported or may not have happened at all. James Tracy, a professor at Florida Atlantic University, has said in his radio interviews and on his blog that trained crisis actors may have been employed by President Barack Obama's administration in an effort to drum up public support for drum gun control. 
the Sun Sentinel reported, as documents related to this Sandy Hook shooting continue to be assessed and interpreted by independent researchers, there is a growing awareness that the media coverage of the massacre of 26 children and adults was intended primarily for public consumption to further larger political ends, writes Tracy, a tenured associate professor of media history at FAU and former union leader, the newspaper reported. Okay, there's more to this article, but here is somebody an educator who is paying attention. More Americans should pay attention because if more Americans pay attention, we should march into these media outlets and we should drag them out into the streets and we should call them on all of their lies, put them in jail for their complicit activity in deceiving the American people. Those who are on the media lying about these events are just as guilty as those who are involved in these events. Okay? They are called accomplices. Accomplices may be after the fact, or perhaps in some cases accomplices before the fact. So either way, the media is guilty of being an accomplice to murder, to theft, to all of the bad things that are going on. Every time they tell a lie, they're complicit in that activity. And yet every day, good Americans, good, hard-working Americans will turn on that mainstream media channel, one of them, and they will believe what they say hook, line, and sinker, even though evidence shows that the media is lying over and over and over again. It's mind-boggling how people have lost control of their own inability to be able to think for themselves and to be able to step away from the lies. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. I don't understand how that happens, but it does. Now this gun control issue is a big issue, and the reason I keep talking about it, it's not about the guns, okay? It's about what they represent. If we look throughout history, as we heard from the various guests we've had, yesterday Dan Johnson was talking about it, and with the NDAA and others are talking about it, with the events that are taking place, people are being conditioned to let go of the very rights that they have by, give, by disinformation that is being presented to them. People need to think. Here is a piece. Now, what, one thing, let me backtrack here. One thing that history has shown is there's been gun control that has taken place throughout history time and time again. And the times when it has happened, we can see from history that that has preceded some sort of a civil war or some sort of revolutionary war or something happened after the gun control. It didn't just end there. Okay? Nazi Germany, the Germans didn't have the guns, but the not or the Jews didn't have the guns, but the Nazis did. Who do we hear won that? And who do you, we hear was killed off? The ones that didn't have the guns were killed off by the ones that did. And the ones nowadays that are keeping the guns are the tyrannical governments that are out there terrorizing individuals in the name of freedom. Well, please, government, don't represent me in the name of freedom if that's the way you do it. Because I don't believe in the concepts that you're doing. I don't believe in your wars. I don't believe in the violence and the tyranny and the lies that you're putting out. I believe in God, in love, in faith, humanity. These are the qualities that I think are important that we should have in the world. Not the qualities of you governments that spit out all these lies. You're evil. There's evil, evil dominions, evil minions within your, your groups. And you need to be eradicated. And you will, because the light is going to shine brightly. And the darkness is going to dissipate. Because one thing I know from every prophecy that is out there, in the end, God wins. So, we as Americans, we as humans, we as earthlings, we need to pay real close attention to what's going on. Now, the other day, you may have heard the piece on Alex Jones and Piers Morgan. Um, Piers Morgan was throwing out some statistics. That guy's just a jackass. I don't, you know, if you believe anything Pierce Morgan says, then whatever comes of it, it's your own fault. Because it's been proven over and over this guy's a liar. 
Okay, we even have the stories that he left from where he was because he was involved with scandals and now he's here in the Americas working with another media outlet. Look, first time a guy is told to be part of a scandal and lies, you should stop listening to him. So, what's the problem? How many times would you listen to your kid if your kid kept lying to you? Or your spouse? How many times would you continue to trust them? Then why do you keep trusting the government and the media that's lying to you? Doesn't make sense, does it? Listen to this piece here. This brings a bit of reality. This is Ben Swan. We haven't heard from him in a while. This is Ben Swan talking about the issue of gun control. Over the past few weeks, the argument over gun control has raged. And among those demanding stricter gun laws is CNN host Piers Morgan. There's one particular stat that Morgan has been citing for weeks. In our commitment to Balanced News, Ben investigates the truth behind it in Reality Check. Last night on CNN's Piers Morgan Tonight, Morgan interviewed radio host Alex Jones. And to say it was wild, well, that would be an understatement. Here's just a small clip. Answer this question. How many Why'd guns... Why'd you get fired from the Daily Mirror for putting many, out fake stories? How You're a hatchet many, man of the New World Order. You, let's try again. <laughs> how many gun murders were there... Oh, you're going to ban your fist now? ...in Britain last year? Uh, how many uh, chimpanzees can dance on the head of a pin? Hmm. I already went over those statistics. Do, do you know the answer? Uh, no, I don't. I, you said hundreds. It's very low. You said hundreds. Yes. It's actually 35. Well, the point is you can Against 11,000. As I said, it was wild. And it got even more wild than that. But we wanted to take a look at some of that exchange because the stat that Piers Morgan was continuing to cite, one that Great Britain, which banned guns about 15 years ago, had only 35 gun-related murders in 2011 compared to the United States, which had 11,000. Let's start there, because that number is not correct. According to FBI crime stats for 2011, there were 12,664 homicides in the U.S. Of those, 8,583 were caused by firearms. But of those, 400 are listed as justifiable homicide by law enforcement, 260 justifiable homicide by private citizens. On the other hand, it is true that percentage-wise, Britain has a lower gun homicide rate, with a population of 62.6 .6 million, Great Britain saw 59 gun-related homicides for 2011. Still, not the 35 Piers Morgan keeps citing. But that shouldn't be surprising that the gun homicide rate in a country that bans guns would be lower than in a country where guns are not banned. Where the argument falls apart is when you attempt to claim that fewer guns equals less crime. The U.S. has the highest gun ownership rate in the world, an average of 88 guns per 100 people. That puts it first in the world for gun ownership. Yemen is second with 54.8 guns per 100 people. So that means the U.S. has the highest gun murder rate as well, right? Well, no. Honduras, El Salvador, and Jamaica have higher rates. So do 24 other countries. The U.S., despite being number one in gun ownership, is number 28 in gun homicide with a rate of 2.97 per 100,000 people. Of course, Piers Morgan isn't calling for the U.S. to be more like El Salvador and Honduras. He's calling for us to be more like Great Britain. So what do the numbers look like there? The U.K. has the second highest overall crime rate in the EU. The U.K. has the fifth highest robbery rate, the fourth highest burglary rate. But more importantly, the EU named Britain as the most violent country in the EU. In the UK, there are 2,034 violent crimes per 100,000 people. That puts it way ahead of even South Africa with a rate of 1,609 per 100,000. In the United States, we're not even in the top 10. The U.S. has a violent crime rate of 466 crimes per 100,000 residents. So what this means for you is that while people like Morgan insist that the U.S. can learn from Great Britain, well, maybe we can. What we might learn is that violent crime is not the result of a gun or any tool. It is the result of the heart of men and women. And that is Reality Check. You can find the sources for the story posted on our website at fox19.com. If you'd like to make your voice heard in the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. Find it by searching Ben Swan. All right. So, interesting. So, you know, the best thing that could happen to a guy like Piers Morgan is people just turn him off, ignore him. If nobody 
listen to the guy, if his ratings dropped because people realized he was lying, what would the guy do? He'd have to crawl under another rock somewhere. Same with all of the media. Turn off. I know that if you're listening to the show, you're probably not out watching the mainstream news on a regular basis, except to understand the lies they're telling. And it must be frustrating, because I'm sure you tell your friends all the time to turn off the mainstream. But, I don't know. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? Okay, one more piece here, because this is a piece that came up in regards to the gun control. It's called the Dick Act of 1902, and this is not just a uh, summary on the last couple presidential administrations. This is actually a bill that was passed, an act that was passed in Congress in 1902, saying that basically it was a fail-safe apparently that Congress put in to keep the guns from being taken away, from being confiscated. It was, the, this is in effect forever. So here's a little bit of history about this. I found this really good video. And more than just a history, there's some great common sense behind this story. So I wanted you to listen to this because we're at a time right now where we need to have common sense about what's going on. We've seen that there's efforts being pushed to drive a civil war, to take guns away from people. We see these things happening. Rights are being taken away. There's a new world order agenda being pushed. And we need to be calm about the situation. We need to be more aware of what is going on so we can deal with it and not be all chaotic because we all know that there's a lot of people not paying attention so when things get bad the people who aren't going to pay, aren't paying attention they're just going to be in the way and we're going to have to deal with them and so we need to be calm because there's going to be a lot of scared individuals that are going to need to have some explanations about things and what's happening so let me play this piece here listen to the information but also really listen to the to the nature of of what needs to happen with the person okay that's the important piece of information in this piece here here we go thanks for watching not gun nuts uh, somebody's mentioned more than one person in fact has mentioned the dick act of 1902 or the efficiency of militia bill HR 11654 and if you're listening to this for the first time, um, keep in mind I'm not a legal expert, I'm not a history expert, I'm not a firearms expert, I'm not a political expert. I'm just someone who's looking at information that's available to all of us and I'm trying to make some sense of it and interpret it for us in a time when I think many people are behaving very irrationally about a lot of things, not just firearms, a lot of things. And now let me start this by saying someone commented to me recently and said, you have a very calm, reasoned way of presenting things and that's cool and I just want to say right now I want to be very clear I am not calm at all I'm actually burning inside at how distorted and weak-minded we've become in some ways and how much we surrender our control to cheap entertainment false leadership ignorance and lazy thinking what I am is composed and I'm composed because I think that's what's lacking with so many people around the world today including our top leadership and I think this should be evident in all areas of the world around you starting with the most basic observation that most people aren't even competent enough to properly use a turn indicator while driving much less to maintain and culture true principles of first responsibility then rights and freedoms. So I'm definitely not calm. I'm composed because composure is probably the first and most important tool the founders of this country had above all else. None of what they did or established could have been possible without composure. If something catches fire, you can either flail around in terror or you can snuff out the flames. That choice is yours. I choose composure in all things. And right now, particularly with regard to the assault on firearms owners, I urge everyone to maintain composure and one of the best ways to do that is to educate yourself as much as possible about the reality of the situation we're all in so anyway that's my preamble back to the dick act people wanted to talk about this because a lot of people are saying they're sort of using this as a way to say well listen the dick act basically invalidates all gun control laws and they cite it and they link it and things like that and that's great and i'm going to read like primarily what the dick act says in general 
and then I'll talk about it a little bit. But this is generally what you hear about the Dick Act. Quote, the Dick Act of 1902, also known as the Efficiency of Military Bill, H.R. 11654, of June 28, 1902, invalidates all so-called gun control laws. It also divides the militia into three distinct separate entities, and dot, dot, dot. And I'll post this entire quote in the description below so you can read it on your own. But to me, basically, when I read the Dick Act, the sense that I get is that it establishes organization of militia. And there are words in there that talk about firearms ownership and who can and the age groups and things like that. And that's great. Feel free from that point to interpret it however you want. Do as much research on it you want. And if there's something that actually supports uh, anti-gun control, that's great. Use that. But, but never forget the Second Amendment. And I say this. Be very careful using the Dick Act as an argument for your right to keep and bear arms. Because, because the Second Amendment is the prime right. And it's the understanding that you have that right. It's not given to you by someone else. It's merely understanding and recognition of that right. So it's from that that I say be careful with the Dick Act because this in itself could be considered a form of gun control in that it states who is able to own firearms. By using this to support the right to keep and bear arms, it's nearly admitting the Second Amendment itself is up for question. Our founding fathers were very clear and they stated it very simply, shall not be infringed. And also, despite much of the rhetoric that attempts to convince people this right comes from some ancient document and has no relevance today, the framers stated it, as well as everything they said at the time, in a way that made it clear those principles were to stand for all time. Not one week, not one day, all time. They did not say the right to keep and bear arms this week or this year because of some current event. They lived amidst and had for centuries witnessed the horrors of human nature as much as anyone does today. They understood the absolute requirement for individual rights to bear arms. There was no false sense that if they just banned rifles, threats to their individual or collective safety, foreign or domestic, would just somehow go away. It was exactly the opposite, in fact. They knew threats, local and widespread, would always be there and as such shall not be infringed. So take a look at the Dick Act, but your right to keep and bear arms cannot be summarized there. It is a natural right to individual and collective self-defense, period. This applies within the home you lay your head down in at night, as well as within the nation you call your home. And now again, I don't claim to be right about any of this. This is just my deep personal sense about what we're dealing with. The next time you leave your house, know that around you are many 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 gun owners many many firearms owners and i would like you to pay special attention to how little mass shootings and gun violence are occurring around you that day for that you can thank all of the responsible gun owners in this country who wish you no harm at all and in fact might just have your back when the time comes support gun owners protect the second amendment thanks for watching not gun nuts All right, so there you go. There's some good common sense. We need to be aware of uh, what's going on. All right, uh, one last piece before our meditation. Look, I talk about all the nonsense that's going on in the world because, as I say, we don't want to have our head in the sand. We want to be able to know what we're dealing with so we can deal with it effectively. However, past that, we need to always keep in mind that the most important thing is the spiritual element. And by going into the spiritual element, we can go into a place where we can affect the change. And the change we're looking to affect is this battle that's going on between the light and the dark, between the good and the evil. And it's only by going into that spiritual that we can do that. Now, we've entered a, this point. We've The Mayan calendar, long count, has come to an end. We've completed a cycle, the great year, as Plato calls it. And now we've moved on into the next cycle. We're, we've just begun another 26,000 year cycle and this process, this term of ascension has been been out there in the world and people have cons thought about what is it? Is it where everyone's lifted up off of the planet or is it something else? Well, ascension is also a process of ascending within yourself. Your consciousness raises from one place to another. That's part of the ascension process. So this is a piece which talks about the ascension process that we are all going through. There is nobody on this planet immune from the process which is taking place. Either you're going to be in sync with it and move with it, 
or you're not, but everyone is subject to the same opportunities. Here we go. Listen to this, and then we'll do the meditation. Everything in the universe is interconnected. In other words, our bodies are related to everything that corresponds to our physical senses. If you can see, smell, touch, hear, or taste something, then that is related to your existence. We are connected to our planet as our planet is connected to our solar system. Our solar system is connected to our galaxy and our galaxy is connected to the universe. It's all one living and breathing organism of life. This shift isn't just a shift for mankind. It's a shift that involves every level of dimension as well as every planet in our solar system. If our solar system is heating up, then the frequencies of each planet within this solar system is rising in conjunction to the galactic shift. The planets in our solar system are raising their vibrations right now. These planets are making preparation for the transformational shift to occur in the upcoming years culminating in 2012. This is proof that the shift is already happening. So you're probably thinking, what does that mean for me? As the frequencies are rising, our anatomical structure is changing in accordance to this shift. Our DNA resonates with these gradual changes. Many people are discovering or rediscovering hidden abilities that they had when they were children, along with newly founded abilities such as seeing auras in other people, telepathy, or ESP. In the past, many people were afraid to talk about these abilities and suppress them for fear of being ridiculed. Now, these abilities are becoming more prevalent to those in tune with the shift, and people are outwardly expressing these abilities. For those who are aware of what's happening, we're all going through a DNA upgrade right now. If you look at the lineage of mankind, there is no gradual change found throughout our lineage. The change was abrupt. This will also be the case in what we're currently experiencing. Through this DNA upgrade, our DNA will be fully utilized, including all of the junk DNA that we aren't currently using, which will unlock the mystery of why we're here, who we were in previous lives, and what our true spiritual potential is capable of accomplishing. For some people, this is already happening when they feel that sense of urgency or feel like it's time to go home. Your DNA is giving you these messages. People are ending dead-end relationships in which their bodies can no longer tolerate a person of negative influence. These people are surrounding themselves with other positive like-minded people as they unknowingly prepare themselves for this transition. Many people will continue to follow the sheep mentality and will continue to ridicule others as they make this transition only to find that they'll be left behind with no one to blame but themselves. For now, those who are aware of the shift, enjoy it. There's no better time to be alive than right now. Alright, so go ahead and uh, close your eyes. Relax. Take a deep breath and exhale. All right, I want you to imagine yourself in a field. And as you stand there in the field looking around, you're able to see all elements of life and experience all the different qualities of energy. The subtle and that which is not so subtle. You experience the wind, the water, the fire, and the earth. You understand that all things necessary are provided by the universe, for the universe takes care of its own. You realize that change is the nature of the universe. And that when we flow with the change, we're flowing with 
the evolutionary process that has been taking place for millions of years. And as we flow with the evolution taking place, we find that the problems of Earth become small in comparison. We realize that the challenge is taking place and as we experience all of the energy around us, We realize that it is as easy as taking a breath to be in synchronicity with the earth, with life. It's as easy as taking a breath to let go of the fear, to let go of the doubts. So we take a deep breath, we exhale. Let's imagine now all the doubts and the fears leaving each and every individual. And as those doubts and fears rise, let us send love to each of those energies and turn those doubts and fears into love, into hope, and into faith. Let us imagine the whole world opening their eyes to the reality of what is truly taking place in the universe and here on earth and from that reality let us imagine the world making better decisions and let's just hold that idea of making better decisions in our hearts and allow our unconscious mind to continue to work on this process while our conscious mind comes back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. There you have it, my friends. That's the end of the show for today. Thanks very much for being here. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Remember, we're in charge of our lives. We can affect the change that we want. We just have to turn away from all of the lies, the fears, and the doubts that are being spread by those in the world who are just a bit misinformed. We're going to get through it. We're all in this together. We just need to support each other, nurture each other, take care of each other. That's it. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.